Hello friends, welcome to my channel Math Alcoholic. So this video is the concluding video of exercise 3.2 where I'll be discussing the last three questions which are pretty easy. Question number 20 I'll be starting with. It says that the bookshop of a particular school has 10 dozen chemistry books, 8 dozen physics books, 10 dozen economics books. If you don't know what 1 dozen is, it is equal to a quantity of 12 things. So 1 dozen eggs is equal to 12 eggs. You may say like that. Now, their selling prices are rupees 80, rupees 60, and rupees 40 each, respectively. Find the total amount the bookshop, bookshop will receive from selling all the books and using matrix algebra. See, there is no necessity of using matrix algebra, but we need to do it by matrix algebra. So, let's see how to do it. Starting by solution, we need to have the given data at first. So, given the bookshop has 10 dozen chemistry books, 8 dozen physics books, and once again 10 dozen economics book. Economics books. Alright. Now their selling prices are respectively. Selling prices are respectively rupees 80 rupees 60 and rupees 40 all right now therefore in matrix form so in matrix form what we can write the total amount of money is just the multiplication of the number of books by the price of each books that's it the total amount of money received by selling all the books okay so what is it we'll be starting with chemistry books that is 10 dozen means 10 into 12 8 dozen physics books means 8 into 12 physics books and once again 10 into 12 economics book now the chemistry books cost rupees 80 physics 60 and economics 40 respectively so this is the total cost all right because we can do multiplication only if we can do the matrix multiplication of two matrices m by n and a by b only if n is equal to a so that is what we have arranged here and this is the proper rule of matrix multiplication so see taking 12 away from this matrix we can easily take by the properties of matrices we have 10 8 10 multiplied by 80 60 40 so it is done just now the calculatory part left so let us calculate it so this is 10 into 80 plus 8 into 60 plus 10 into 40 this is 10 into 80 plus 8 into 60 plus 10 into 40 which would very simply give you 12 into 800 plus 480 plus 400 that is equal to 12 into 1680 which is equal to 20,160 so this is the total amount okay so thus the book show will receive rupees 20,160 from the sale of all these books okay all right so this question is completed and it is a pretty easy one you can do it yourself also now coming to the next question see exercise uh, in these two questions there are 21 and a follow-up question 22 which is just by this assumption this assumption is both for this 21 and 22 so let us see what are these assumptions x y z w and p are matrices of the order this so let us list it, list it out see we will be not doing subjective solutions for objective problems as i have told earlier so the matrix s x is of order 2 by n matrix y is of order 3 by k matrix z is of order 2 by p matrix w is of order n by 3 and matrix p is of, is of order p by k okay so we have noted down the given data now the restrictions on n k and p so that p y plus w y will be defined so for p y plus w y to be defined friends let us see that first of all p and y the product must have to be possible then w and y this product must have to be possible and finally 
after we have made the conditions for it to be possible the resultant matrices must be of the equal order so let us see the order of p is p by k the order of y is 3 by k so k must be equal to 3 all right for for the product p and y to be possible as we have discussed in the previous questions so k is equal to 3 this is justified now for w and y this product to be defined what is the order of w that is n by 3 what is the order of y that is 3 by k so here we can easily get that it can be multiplied for any n and k okay but here k is equal to 3 we have restricted in the first case and here by matrix multiplication the order will be getting of p p into y will be p by k and the order will be getting from this multiplication is 3 this is common so n by k we had discussed how this comes now for this to be added to this you must remember that that see the number of columns in both these matrices is equal so p must be equal to n for this to be additive the order must have to be same so p must be equal to n if you have any problem understanding please feel free to use the comment section it is very easy first the restriction is whether the multiplication is possible or not after that is done the multiplied product both the multiplied pro products py and wy must be of the same order to be additive okay so this leaves us with the first option okay so this is the answer now once again it is very simple it is said that if n is equal to p then the order of the matrix 7x minus 5z so 7x minus 5z the order is actually of x minus z nothing else the scalar only just changes the elements inside not the order so the order of x is 2 by n the order of z is 2 by p it is already given n is equal to p so the resultant order of by subtracting subtracting two matrices is the same remains the same so it is either 2 by n or 2 by p both are options are available but here only 2 by n is given so 2 by n and 2 by p are the same so option b is the only correct option here matrices okay so this completes our exercise 3.2 and these both were pretty easy in fact the last one question by 20th was also pretty easy but still if you have any kind of problems please feel free to use the comment section friends so i'll be meeting in the next video starting exercise 3.3 which is the real application of matrices these are just basic things all right uh, let's meet in the next video thank you very much for watching this video